Hello and welcome back to another episode of whatever it is that this is. Uh, I'm David, audio programmer slash tech sound designer slash person extraordinaire and sentient potato. I'm going to be walking you through a pretty common case uh, use for volumes uh, within audio today, uh, given that sometimes what we want is a volumetric emitter being an emitter that sits inside a volume, follows the player around while they're inside the volume, and when they're not, sort of sticks to the closest point there. Now I won't be using audio gameplay volumes here, I'm just going to be using a very basic uh, trigger volume with a uh, component overlap, so you should be able to get started pretty quickly. I've got a little scene here uh, with just a beautiful little asset that I get from Kitbash because every couple of months I get a little subscription and then I, I get rid of it and then I get it again because <laughs> they're great assets. The idea here is that uh, we have this uh, big empty Westworld sort of vibe uh, thing that we're walking around in. And as we come up to this uh, component here, we're going to see uh, a sound source that's going to stick. Now it looks a little bit like this where we have a sound source that's sort of finding the closest point. And as we walk away, it stays there, right? And if we come up to it, it'll stick onto us while we're inside the volume so we can hear it in 2D and then we can back out again. Uh, you can get this pretty seamless so that you're going to spatially reduce content um, as you come up to it and increase it a little bit later on. There are a few ways of approaching this task and the way that I'm doing is sort of loosely based on the value in this book. Uh, there's an amazing chapter in here written by Nick Taylor from Blizzard uh, that talks about a whole bunch of really cool math about how to determine point volumes on sources. Now I initially implemented that and it turns out it's a little bit longer than what you can get out of like two nodes in Unreal. So I'm gonna show you the two nodes approach, but if you want uh, a little bit more detail, that's where you should go. The volume itself uh, just has a very simple begin play. So this is where we, you know, play the audio. Uh, I didn't go through optimizing this over great distances. So this is something that is active over a long time, but you can throw this into something later on. Now I've got uh, some some debug here that just prints blobs, so don't need to worry too much about that. And we have whether or not we're attached. When we begin to overlap uh, the box, and specifically when we have uh, the, the trigger volume itself only overlaps with player porn, so it, it doesn't have any other calculations. Then what we do is we attach the audio component to the uh, colliding listener. And if that was successful, we say, yeah, we attached. And this means that we don't need to look for tr trigger collisions anymore. And all we're gonna do is let the attachment sort of take over. Uh, so we should be a little bit lighter on the processing while we're in the volume because we're not doing calculations. When we leave the volume, we just do the reverse. We say, hey, uh, take that audio component, attach it back to us again. Um, that's, that will kind of let us be, uh, when we're in the volume, audio source is 2D, we're outside the volume, audio source is 3D. Now, we don't wanna do much more than the snap to target on the attachment, which is to say that if your listener is a little bit behind uh, the player, which usually is, uh, when you your player enters a volume, there will be a slight snap for the uh, audio source itself, which is why we need some of these uh, attenuation 2D, 3D spatial uh, bits that I'll go through. When we're not attached, there's only two parts we, two nodes really that we we actually care about. One is getting the listener location. This is just to say where is the listener. You could get the base player character. You could do all those, that sort of stuff. Um, I didn't do that because I think that the listener is the most important thing, um, and this is a little bit easier for multiplayer games, things like that. For that, we just need to you get the world location of the box, uh, the the cutoff range here of just passed in as a float. Uh, which I think I said at like 5,000. Yeah, 5,000. And the closer listener, closest listener location, if you're using Wise or using some other middleware, you might have some more uh, jumps, hoops to jump through, jumps to hoop through. Uh, but I am not because meta sounds. So the next part is the closest point on collision. Now this is very, very closely based to the methods discussed in Game Audio Programming 2. Uh, it has... There's a number of different elements here, but this kind of wraps it all into one. So it's slightly more expensive than rolling specifically a box collision because this will take the collision point from any collision body. So this will work for capsules, spheres, wacky spaceships, audio volumes, of all, all, all other means. But the whole idea is that we say, give me the point being the listener, give me the value being the box, and what's the closest point between them? Well, we get this... Uh, out point on body, 
um, which is to say the, the body of the box closest to that, it sticks to the box and it doesn't come out to us. It just stays as close as it can basically. And then we set the audio component and, and that's the whole thing. Now we're gonna get the closest listener location or your player location, some variable, some way to get the player. We're going to get the closest point on the collision, which for me is a box, just to make it very clear. You can see this box component here uh, that really doesn't do very much um, except for trigger uh, having collision presets for triggers and nothing else. Um, and, and making sure that you don't, if you find yourself bumping into the wall, it's probably your collision presets. When I hit play here, you can see there's our sound that's as close to the listener as it can be. There's another sound over here just to show you that uh, they can kind of play nicely together. And it's really your attenuation settings that jump in here. If I go to my uh, attenuation settings for my Metasound source, from here I'm saying that, hey, when we're, uh, when we're using this non-spatialized radius start, this is to say that you know, up until a thousand, we're going to be transitioning to 2D and after that we're gonna be 3D. We have this set to zero or if you choose some other values or if you find that your sound source when you get really close uh, pings and, and you can hear that spatial change of it jumping position, uh, you might just need to play with some of those ranges. Um, some, some different collision types can help you here as well. You could say like while they're in the outer part of a collision, let's start changing. Uh, but you have a lot of freedom here in terms of the actual spatialization that you get out of the box here. I have a pretty small inner and uh, outer radius fall off. This is just to say that like, I pretty much always want it transitioning from uh, 3D to, to 2D. The ambiences themselves, these structures here, they're supposed to just be non-distinct point source emitters. Um, they are important to be near the tents, but spatially, I don't want someone realizing that the, you know this guitar sound is coming from that tent specifically. You could put point sources on top of this layer. You can build a whole system here. You can see it stays uh, as close as it can. It's kind of moving uh, with the camera here, which is a little bit tricky because if I F8 and jump out and fly around, I still have the camera kind of set up. But you can see once I get inside, it sticks onto me and I get this kind of, uh, I get this ambience. Um, I get a little bit of this uh, slide guitar, which I just I bought this slide guitar in Amsterdam uh, 10 years ago and uh, it finally got on something. <laughs> and then when we get out of the uh, area, it's going to leave us there and say goodbye. And it's even going to follow us around just to be sure, you know, that it's, that it's uh, sticking as close as it can so that if we do pop in, and we find some other spot, it's happy to stay with us. Pretty quick and easy one for volumetric emitters. It's a great way to handle your ambiences in a very, very voice performant way. Um, and you're, you know, you're quite light, so you can have a very low resolution for the tick frequency for the evaluation of these ambient volumes. And you can just only evaluate the closest one. Uh, there's, there's quite a few different versions. Thanks so much for checking it out and I'll see you next time.